Hi and welcome along to Transfer Daily Extra with my man James. Today we are going to take a look at Fabio Vieira. <laughs> and you know what, I do hope he gets his own song and we don't just sing Vieira. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, give him his own that. song. Give him his own song. But out of the blue, um, it, the news came out that we were signing Fabio Vieira. Um, nobody really had linked him on all my shows on Transfer Daily. Not one link to this guy. And then all of a sudden, he's on his way to Arsenal. And what we thought we'd do is we take a deeper look at exactly who Fabio Vieira is. I was chatting to a friend of mine yesterday, right? And he was trying to claim that he knew all about him. And I said to him, well, hold on a minute. Where have you seen him play, right? Because you might have seen him, I've seen him play like a couple of games in the Champions League. But apart from that, where have you seen him play? They don't show Portuguese football on TV over here in the UK. And he was like, oh, 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 that, 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 that. in other words, he was lying. He didn't have a clue. Don't worry. I ain't going to name who you were. But James is here to tell us exactly what type of player we are getting in Fabio Vieira. Because a lot of people are excited about him, heard a lot of things about him. But who is he? Yeah, I mean... I'm one of the few who was really excited when this link came out. Um, I did get a little bit of that on Twitter, the, oh yeah, pretending you know who he is. This is genuinely, I promise, this is a player I've actually have known about for a good year or two. Always been an exciting prospect coming out of Portugal, under 21 um, championships player of the tournament. He's a very exciting, the kind of player I love. Left-footed, kind of skillful, creative, the kind of player who does things in the final third, the kind of player who gets you off your seat a little bit. Um, the kind of player some people might say we have in Odegaard and we're going to explore that kind of thing. Um, but he is someone I'd heard about. Yeah, and I'll be really honest, a lot of my kind of research when it comes from, from football comes from, uh, you know, video games like your football managers or whatever and their databases and then watching YouTube and reading reports and reading what other people are saying. I follow a lot of journalists that kind of watch a lot of Europe, uh, watch a lot of football around Europe. And mm. Fabio Silva was a name that was coming up a lot. So I kind of had an idea that this was a guy that was going to be making moves to the Premier League. I just didn't expect it to be Arsenal. And I know mm. we've got other pro uh, positions we need to address, but this is this is a signing I'm excited about. Yeah, Fabio Vieira, mm. um, not Silva, as you said. Did right? I say you, Silva? You just said Fabio there Silva. Here's me saying I, 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 know I know all about this player. But you know, I know why you just said Fabio Silva, because you were sort of saying to me that he's mm. got a little sort of similarities to Bernardo Silva. Yeah, that was my original thought. And again, based off kind of watching YouTube videos and seeing what positions he plays, I kind of thought he's a bit of a Bernardo Silva. Doing more research and looking more into the mm. numbers and stuff, I have changed my tone a little bit on that, and we'll go into it. But let's just start by going through the general player profile. Yep. 22 years old, stands at five foot six. Short. Um, he's short, but you know when I was watching the videos, he doesn't look that short. Um, mm. So yeah, anyway, five foot six, maybe five foot seven. I read elsewhere. Um, attacking midfielder, left-footed player, and obviously he is Portuguese. Um, let's go through some of his 21-22 uh, Premier League stats. Um, he's made 27 appearances in the 34 games, but interestingly, only 15 starts. Now that has been a concern for some people well, online. I've been reading some people saying. We'll break that down a little bit in a sec. But he still managed to rack up six goals, 14 assists and 0 0.7 goals and assists per game, which is not a bad, mm. that's not a bad output, especially when you've only got 15 starts. And we what, know what, why only 15 starts? So something I want to go into, in fact, hold that question. Okay, because we are, we, are, we are coming to it. I think, it. I think essentially it's been a case of last season kind of getting minutes here and there. He had coronavirus. I think he might have had an injury. Mm. Uh, when I looked into uh -oh. it... He, but I don't, I, don't think, I don't think that's a concern, to be fair. I didn't see kind of yeah. when I was looking at his record, it wasn't littered with injuries. I think mm. on the bench here and there, maybe being eased in. And he's 22 years old, so yeah. maybe you'd expect a little bit more game time. But again, we will address that in a little bit. I wanted to talk a little bit more about his style, as we talked about. He's a guy who's very kind of, very elegant on the ball. You know, kind of, he likes to pass, he likes the tight spaces, he can beat a man, he can mm. dribble. Um if we look at some of his you know, positions he's played, again, I got this via transfer mark. He's played, this is purely this season, he's played 16 times as an attacking midfielder, 13 times as a second striker, which is a little bit more advanced than a typical mm. attacking midfielder. But he's played left midfield and he's played right midfield on quite a few occasions. So, and central midfield once at all. So he is a Very player. Very versatile player, isn't he? He's played across the midfield. And I think that is one thing that is going to excite Arsenal fans is that when we are looking at these players and I was thinking, well, we've got Martin Odegaard. Do we really need another 
sort of attacking midfield, another player. I think he is someone who is going to cover quite a few positions for Arsenal. Um, I've then got some standout stats from um, sort of the Premier League and kind of where he's ranking. We've got them here. His 14 assists were the second highest in the division, matched, I think, by someone else, but only one other player got 15. Mm. Uh, his 0 0.3 expected assist per 90 is the best in the league. And again, per 90 is crucial because we mentioned that he's not had as much game time mm. as perhaps people would have expected. So to be ranking highly there is good. 17 through balls, that's second in the league again, despite breaking the lack the of game time. Breaking the lines. 20 goal contributions put him sixth in the league. I'm going to keep making that point about the lack of game time. And 14 big chances created, again, sixth in the division. Now, you are asked me about that lack of game time and where that might have been caused and is that a concern I'll go into that here Vieira uh, only managed 18 starts in the last two full league campaigns now that is slightly mm. that you do take notice when that kind of stat comes out however in the second half of the season his average minutes per game went from 28 minutes to 66 so quite mm. literally from match day 18 which is halfway through their season they only play 34 games it, it went up almost three times. So mm. we are talking a player who towards the end of the season, and that's what we want to look at, the more recent minutes. He is a player who has played far more frequently, been a, been a key part. We saw him playing in the Champions League for Liverpool. We came off the bench, got the assist. So I don't think the lack of game time is something that we should be worrying about. Obviously, looking at that, though, he's not going to be probably a player that's going to come in and be your star. Mm -hmm. He's probably going to be a player that will come in, will be part of the squad, and will sort of develop in. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I think there's absolutely some truth to that. I think if we take it to the tactical pad um, and we're looking at the positions he might play, mm. you're looking at the kind of player, immediately people are saying, well, there we go. He's going to go in Odegaard's position. Mm. Um, he's the kind of player who drifts to the right. Again, we're going to touch on that in the... Um, uh, when we look at heat maps in a second. He's played on the right of a 4-4-2 before. I think a lot of people think when I was reading and I was asking, I wonder why we're going for this deal. Remember, we had a big old debate about Basuma mm. and I was saying, mm. well, we got Partey, so we don't need to be splashing big money on someone who's just going to be a backup. I think with Vieira, though, because he covers a range of positions, whether it be depth for Odegaard, he can also play in the front three and be depth for Saka. He can also play on the left side. And we've seen at times that he mm. has wanted Arteta to play maybe Odegaard on that left side or Smith Rowe, add a bit more creativity. He's been happy to move Xhaka to left back. So I don't think he's absolutely dead set on Xhaka being his starter there. We've seen the, link with, the links with Tielemans which suggest that too. Or he could even play in Martinelli's position. He can quite literally cover four positions, mm. two in that front three and two in that midfield three. But I think where this gets interesting is the comparisons to Odegaard because... Again, you mentioned it early in the show. I was very quick to say he's Bernardo Silva-like. And I think that might be true in kind of the way he moves with the ball and being left-footed and some of the mm. positions he might play. But I think he's a little bit more forward-thinking. And I wanted to touch on that. The stats I mentioned, they suggest high output. They suggest a creator in the final third, which is why I wanted to go into his heat map. Let's find it here. Mm -hmm. So his heat map on the tactical pad... We've got it here. Again, covered a range of positions. We've looked at that in the stats. You know, he's played on the right, he's played on the left, tends to drift more to the right than on the left. Mm. You compare that to Odegaard's heat map, much more right focused, yeah. much more. You're not looking at a player who's necessarily coming in to be the like for like, sort of whatever, mm. you know, he's going to be sort of just rotating and he's shown he's got a versatility across the pitch. But I wanted to look more at those assist stats because those really jumped out at me. 14 assists, you know, not as, as we mentioned, not had the game time that perhaps we'd have expected. So I pulled them up here. Let's bring them up. These are his assists in all competitions, actually, not just the Premier League, but there are mm -hmm. 14 of them and then 15 in all competitions. Now, the things that I'm looking at here are the wide areas that yeah. he is delivering from. Mm. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, yeah, you've got your cluster of central assists as well. Mm. But I really want to focus on those wide assists, showing that he can be productive from wide areas, showing that he can, you know, whether it's on his left foot, ball into the box. This one in particular was against Sporting Lisbon. He sort of beat a man, got to the uh, semi-byline, you know, got mm. wide, delivered it into, I think it was Teremi, I can't remember. But anyway, nice header into the back post. And then this, I believe was the Liverpool one 
where he opened it up with his right foot. It's worth mentioning as well. He's got a right foot. Um, and found another cross into the box. He's productive from these wide areas. And if I'm to compare that to... Let's just get rid of that. If I'm to compare that to Martin Odegaard, these were his assists mm. across the season. Now, there's less, and we could focus on the fact that there's less. But they're much more central. They're much more... This was the Norwich one when he rolled it to Tierney and Tierney had a lot of work to do to finish it mm. in the far corner. This was the other Norwich one against Saka, uh, for Saka where he rolls it across. Saka's got to mm. open his body and find the far corner. This was the Smith Rowe one uh, when he scored against Leeds. This was the Smith Rowe one when he scored against Chelsea. And then this, I can't quite remember. Oh, against West Brom and Saka. Mm. They're kind of... All central, aren't they? Much more central. Mm. You're asking quite a lot of the player still from that position. Yeah. Whereas with Fabio Vieira, he's more put it on a plate yeah. for those strikers. He's more found that killer ball, you know, that kind of open the, you know, open his left foot up and whip it to the back post for the header. Yeah. These are the kind of areas that I said with Graham when we did our tactical insight, what we wanted to see. I wanted to see Arsenal, yes, be much more creative in these areas here. These kind of wide areas where Arsenal have been quite good at working themselves into that space, but maybe have lacked that final end product. And Saka, to be fair to him, have stepped, has stepped up in that area. But it's why I think that, you know, you said Bernardo Silva, and I said, I don't know if I've changed my tune on that. I'm not really sure if he's coming in to be that kind of, like, let's say, Odegaard replacement. I think Odegaard's more the facilitator, the pass before the pass. The, mm. He'll get it off Partey and then he'll get it into the final third. I think Vieira's looking to be a lot more of an output player for Arteta. So I'm going to play across the front three. I'm not comparing him quality-wise to Phil Foden. But you know mm. how Phil Foden's considered yeah. a creative midfielder, but Guardiola... And, and a player that's allowed to roam a bit. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the kind of player we're getting. I think he's going to be adding goals and assists to the front three. And if Odegaard gets injured, we'll drop into midfield. But I think we're looking at him to deliver more of this. Yeah. Still a very young player. 22. Um... Has played most, you know, even his international games has been at the under-21 level, which, yeah. like you said, he got player of the tournament. But he's young. It's another young player coming in. It's going to be whether he hits the ground running in the Premier League. That's yeah. the thing. With Premier League and the Portuguese League, two different type of leagues. Although we've seen a lot of players come over from Portugal. You look at the Wolves players, etc., and they have hit the ground running. They've done very well. So hopefully he'll be he'll be very similar and he'll be able to deal with the combative nature of the Premier League. Yeah, that's the idea. And when I look at Arteta, I get the I get the feeling the links to Tielemann and, and we had this big debate about Basuma, you know, with Tielemann, Vieira, those kind of midfielders he's trying to bring in. I think he's looking for even more ball retention. Can Arsenal, when they're under the cosh, you know, at Palace or at Newcastle, whatever, can they keep the ball? Can they work them? Can they force them back? I don't think he's looking to add that steel. Now, we can have a whole debate about whether that's right or not. There we go. Um, but... I definitely think he's looking to add those technicians and that quality in the final third. And yeah. the Vieira one came out of nowhere, but when you look at what he has produced and the areas he's produced them in, it kind of makes a bit of sense that he wants to add this kind of option yeah. to the front line. Yeah, it was a player who was lived very heavily linked with Liverpool. It looked was, like Liverpool yeah. were going to be the team that were going to bring him in to try and team him up with Diaz, who also mm. came from Porto. Yeah. But he has chosen Arsenal. He and has. Uh, Fabio Vieira, um, I think a lot of people are going to be excited to see him. And it's great to get him in now. That we can see him in pre-season. He can get. This is what we want to see. These players coming in early, and um, from what I've been told, it's not going to be four Telemans. Yeah. They still want Telemans as well. So, um, good crucial. business. Good business for you. I, I think great business for thirty million. I'll be consistent. I don't know if this is a priority for Arsenal. Whereas I think goal scoring forwards, mm. Jesus Telemans, I think is. So if we don't address one of those other positions then I'll be a little bit more questioning why we spent 30 million here. Mm. But there's no doubt the talent. I think for 30 million, it is a good deal. And I've got to credit Edu. There was a release clause for only, I think, 10 million more. And he managed mm. to negotiate that down. Um, and I'm excited about him. Yeah, I mean, we've mm. still got a lot to learn. It is hard to compare leagues. It is hard. And, and also, when you look at the data out there, there's not too much. Mm. Um, but I think this is a play we can get excited about. And read what the experts are saying. Listen to what the experts are saying. They're very excited about this player coming out of Portugal. And I think Arsenal mm. got a good one here. OK, well, listen, he's uh, Fabio Vieira. This is James breaking him down. Want to hear from you guys. What have you heard about him? Do you think he's going to be able to uh, fit the system at Arsenal? How regularly will he play?
Um, would love to hear from you guys, especially anybody out there who does follow Portuguese football and seen him play a lot, not just watch a couple of YouTube videos. Let us know in the comments. James, thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe here to AFTV. Check out Transfer Daily each and every day throughout the summer, right up until the 1st of September, keeping you up to date with all of the transfers. Um, but looking forward to seeing Fabio Vieira. Shop for AFTV merch at shop.aftv.co.uk. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat, and Twitch. We've got content for every platform, so check it out.